Hello, Libra. Welcome to your tarot card reading for June 2024. It is a fantastic big month, everyone. June is huge. We have Jupiter now in Gemini. We have the sun through there. We've got Venus. We've got Mercury racing through. We're gonna have the activation of Cancer later on. We've got Mars in Taurus. So there's going to be a lot of activity that goes on. It's gonna be a fantastic month to really see progress, to see developments, to see and feel that true sense of hope that these manifestations, that this lifestyle that you are hoping to cultivate is actually and truly possible for you. So I think generally speaking, there are gonna be a lot of really wonderful things that happen for the most part. Um, and there's going to be this new sense of revival that kind of rushes through everything. So I think it's gonna be a fantastic month. So as you're watching these tarot card readings, you are free to watch for either your sun, moon, or rising sign. However, when I do reference transits, probably, you know, the rising sign is going to be the most accurate in terms of house placement. So just keep that in mind. Um, another really quick little thing, um, I'm going to be starting to post really short dailies on YouTube. I've already been posting them on Instagram and TikTok, and I just really wanted to incorporate these on YouTube as well. One to two minute daily astrology, daily tarot card pulls. So if you really want to make sure that you hit those, um, please make sure to subscribe, hit the little bell so you get the notification every time those get posted. Um, those will We'll probably get started June 1st. Okay, so just FYI on that. Also, the comprehensive readings, we go really, really in deep in these comprehensive readings every month. We get a whole second reading. So if you want to join for that, you are more than welcome. All the information on how to access those are going to be found on the pinned comment down below. I'll pin a comment there and you can also find it in the description box too. So with no further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Thank you all so much. I love you. Have a great month and I'll talk to you soon. Hi Libra, welcome to your June reading. Let's go ahead and get started. We have an animal spirit card as our first card. Was it, what is it that Libra needs to know here? Okay, the chimpanzee, this says, use both your intuition and your intellect to solve the problem or get answers to your question. I really like that for Libra because it kind of offers that balance, right? Intuition and intellect. You don't want to neglect one or the other right now. I do think Libra is operating in a really high-minded place and will continue as we have all this Gemini, Jupiter and Gemini energy. Remember, Jupiter came into Gemini, um, comes in on May 25th. So we have, you know, a whole year with Jupiter and Gemini in the ninth house now. So you are in a more high-minded place and yet there's also a level of spirituality with that too. And I think Libra is in a very connected place and hopefully you can trust that. Hopefully you can trust that within yourself that you are actually in a connected place and that while your intellect, you know, is a tool to use, to strategize and, and to find answers and to make connections, which is what Gemini is really all about. You know, we also really want to go with that gut feeling as much as possible and to not neglect the emotional and kind of the, the physical responses that we have to our options. We have choices placed in front of us. If we have decisions that we need to make, we want to make sure we're making it from a true and authentic place, a place that's coming from something real, something soul driven so we don't have to detour later right so let's go ahead and see what the um, moon card says for libra for june realization okay there might be some really cool insights that happen throughout june for you some cool epiphanies some aha moments that's always nice and i feel like that's like the epitome of what an awakening is, right? Those, those aha moments where our paradigm shifts, our perspective changes, we see things differently, different angles, and our mind opens. And I do love ninth house activity for that because yes, this is all about opening our mind. And um, when we open our mind, there's so much less resistance. We have so much more of a sense of possibility opportunities come in a little bit more easily when we're in that mindset. We have a little bit more gratitude, a little bit more appreciation for so many things. And I think it's just a really good time for Libra to really just shed a lot of the narratives and identities that you've 
had that may have been kind of holding you captive a little bit. One of the things, and I know I'm, this is old news. I know the Jupiter Uranus conjunction back in, in, uh, in, uh, you know, past seasons. Okay. I get that it's over, but it also was so monumental being in that eighth house for Libra, right? Because the eighth house is transformative. We tend to go through a death rebirth throughout the course of this house Jupiter really expanding that death rebirth energy, Uranus revolutionizing things. And really the death is truly identities, especially ones that hold us back and ones that prevent us from, you know, real growth. So, you know, there's, there's a lot to be had on the other end of that transit, the fallout of that transit. There's a lot that's developing now. And with the activation of the ninth house, this is really that time for, Libra to just like really shed its skin fully and let itself, let yourselves shine. Okay. Um, beautiful. So I feel like Libra is really embracing this unknown. Okay. I kind of like the Knight of Swords in this context. It's giving me a good feeling today. Sometimes he gives me a bad feeling, but today he's giving me a good feeling. And when I look at him, he's running straight into the moon, which says Libra is kind of like in this risk-taking type of place that you are physically and emotionally and intellectually, and in terms of your intuition as well, right? Remember this card, you're just ready to dive into this big question mark and you're ready to take the risk and you're ready to kind of face the fear or the doubt or the illusion or whatever. You're ready to go in and and kind of embrace this darker path. And when I say dark, I don't mean like ominous or anything. It's just not very well lit. And I don't know that it will be throughout Gemini season and even on into Cancer season. I don't know that it will be. That's not the point. The point of Gemini season is not to like know exactly where you're going. Okay. This is to have that courage and to feel that rush of life force energy that says, let's dive in, let's make this happen. Let's go for it. And, you know, there can be a lot that comes up, you know, there can be a lot of maybe emotional stuff or whatever, but because your intuition is so strong, it's like, I don't know that Libra is going to have doubts. And so even though stuff comes up, even though, yeah, maybe there are going to be some obstacles or there are going to be some things for you to contend with. Yeah. Okay. But I also don't know that that's going to stop you either. You know, the three of cups tells me that there are people around you, people in your corner, people that you associate with that are truly supportive. And hopefully that is the case. Hopefully you do have a network of people. And of course, Gemini, it's about community and neighborhoods and people who are close to us and people that we associate with on a kind of a regular basis, you know, the close community. And hopefully we do have somewhat of a close community, whether it's in real life or even online nowadays, you know, but people who can lift you up, people who support you and make you laugh a lot. You know, I love the kind of more festive quality with that three of cups. It's productive. It's, it's, it's a group of people that would never hinder you. I mean, if you do have people that are hindering you, that's probably something to deal with, something that you might want to kind of stay away from. If you have people that are talking behind your back or if they're gossiping or rumors or whatever, right? That's clearly something for you to distance yourself from as soon as possible. And uh, I think Gemini, uh, Jupiter being in Gemini now, it's going to be kind of easy to do that. It's like, okay, <laughs> like, let's move on. Let's, let's get over it. Let's get on with it. Okay. Let's not associate with people who are trying to pull us down. I think Libra is just really, really ready with this moon energy to just kind of walk this unknown path to kind of explore new and unknown scene and unknown realms and aspects of life. And, um, I don't know, that night of sort, it just feels so ready. You know, it's like, oh, it's time. Like, I'm so sick of being in this place. I'm so sick of dealing with this issue. I'm so sick of da, 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 da. Like, let's just go. Let's go. Like, there's an impatience coming from Libra. Like, I'm over it. I'm done. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. And I, I do like that for a cardinal sign sometimes, because when you really tap into that, like, initiating magician, let's go quality, things can really start to speed up. And I do think Gemini season can be very speedy. 
right? Because we've got the sun, we got Venus, we got Jupiter, we're gonna have Mercury coming through there really fast. And it's just like, boom, a lot of things can really start to happen. Now, keep in mind that later in the month, later in June, after the activation of cancer season, uh, we do have Saturn and Neptune retrogrades beginning. Nep Neptune is on July 2nd, so I'm a little ahead of myself. But um, late, late June, early July, Saturn, Neptune retrograding. So they're going to be slowing down. So in the beginning, right, this speed, I think you're going to really appreciate this speed a lot. You're going to appreciate the level of progress and the level of um, developments, because I think you're going to start seeing developments. And with the realization, what I love about this is that I feel like it's kind of like one light bulb after the next, like one after the next, one idea, one idea, one concept, one opportunity, boom, 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 boom. And they may not be big ones. Okay. They may not be this, I mean, little paradigm shifts, little perspective shifts and all that, but they can be life changing, but they don't have to be like these massive, massive things. Okay. But um, let's see what else comes out for Libra. Okay, yeah. Not surprised by the world card at all. I think Libra is going to feel a sense of relief of Jupiter coming out of that eighth house, out of Taurus. Okay, definitely going to feel the sense of relief. Because as much as we like Jupiter, because Jupiter is, you know, great. But in a house like the eighth house, it accentuates the, transfer <laughs> the transformation kind of a heavy, heavier, it's deeper, it's inward, you know, it's just kind of a heavier house. So to get them out of there, I think we're all going to feel a little bit better. <laughs> so yes, we have the world card. See, what's interesting about this moon and the hanged man in the middle is that I just don't know you have that you'd have a lot of control over stuff, right? It's just kind of like, there's a lot up in the air right now. There's a lot of things externally that you don't have control over. Like this is not a time for Libra to try to control anyone or anything except for themselves. That's it. Okay. Please Libra do not accept responsibility for anything that is not your responsibility. Do not be trying to bridge the gap with people and with situations where the other side is not trying to meet you in the middle somehow. Okay. Because I just, I feel like you could so easily exhaust yourself exerting so much effort into something. And if it's not coming back to you, it's just going to drain you like truly, truly the acceptance that things are beyond your control and that other people also have choices and other people have their free will and they have to choose to use their free will in a good way. That is going to be, <coughs> excuse me, I'm sorry. It's going to be huge for you huge energy saver, huge time saver. You know, we don't want to be exerting this emotional drainage right now. Okay. We're not in cancer season yet. Okay. <laughs> Let's wait till we get there end of the month, but we're not there yet. Um, so really kind of just putting your hands up and saying, I'm only going to focus on what I can control. I'm going to focus on my behavior, my tasks, my projects, my involvement. I'm going to focus on, and again, not in a selfish way, because I think now that we're moving into Gemini, it is a little bit more community oriented, right? We do have the three of cups. So there are other people involved. So as much as Aries and Taurus is very self-reliant and independent and so much about us, we're starting to open things up now. So we understand that what's really best for us is going to be best for other people. Cause like you are closing out I mean, with the world card, like something is definitely coming to a close and maybe it's been a couple months, maybe it's been a couple years, whatever it is, but I, I do sense a feeling of relief with this world card. And while the world card is not fast, and even though Gemini season, there's going to be a lot that happens, this transition is still going to feel very slow. And I think with these two cards together, even with the moon, it's this weird, fast, but slow thing. Fast in that it's only like a month, but slow in that you don't really perceive the changes that are happening. You are in a go, 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 go type of place, but you're diving into this unknown seen realm. You're diving into this big question mark, this big mystery of life, right? This moon you're diving in and like, there's no semblance of like, okay, well, when are things going to get done and how is this and where is this and what, like all, all you need to do right now is just make little connections, just little ones, 
from point A to point B, B to C, C to D, to E to F to G. That's all you need to do, okay? We don't need to go like all the way right now because Gemini is not the big picture. Gemini is small little things. And the more small we can make those things, will actually, it's weird, like I feel like we're kind of collapsing time a little bit. If you break it up into all these little things, the time frame kind of compresses and you actually make really big leaps, but it's not perceivable with the illusionary aspect of the moon. Like it's like, it's, it's going to be weird. I think it's going to be weird, but great too. And I think it's going to make you feel good and it's going to make you feel accomplished. And the Ace of Cups is going to come in, right? Here's the Ace of Cups. It's about new opportunities and something that's genuinely wanted, like something that Libra really wants is starting to creep its way into your life. And it's starting to make an appearance. It's starting to show up for you. And while the Ace of Cups is merely a potential, I think the fact that it's kind of coming into your reality a little bit and showing up makes you realize like, oh, I am on the right track, right? And you were listening to your intuition from the beginning. That was the very first card we got. You were not only being smart about stuff, but you're also listening to your gut. So double smart. So you're being like double, double smart with your choices and your decisions. And because of that, and because of your more risk-taking energy with that Knight of Swords and that quality of like, let's go for it, um, this Ace of Cups comes in and you're like, oh, wow, okay, that, that works. That strategy, that methodology, whatever it was I did, it worked. And I think you will feel the excitement and you'll feel the passion and you'll feel that little spark that comes in. Now, the Ace of Cups is not such a fiery energy. It's not like a ooh, big whoosh of, you know, like more like an Ace of Wands. I feel like the Ace of Cups is more serene than that. It kind of offers a quality of peace and calm. So it's like once you get that Ace of Cups, once you see that horizon, you'll feel that validation. You'll feel that confirmation of like, okay, this is where I'm supposed to be. This feels right. This feels like I'm on track and it feels like these doors are finally opening, especially when so many doors have been closing for Libra. And I think that eighth house compression with Jupiter and Uranus. Um, I think it was a, as much as it was about liberation. It's like, you can't have liberation without the compression. So we had to go through that point of compression first. Plus the eclipse opposite of you was like a whole big thing. You know, I mean, there's just was a lot. So we compressed and now things are starting to slowly strip away layer by layer. And we're starting to feel that sense of relief and the relief is coming kind of one thing at a time. Um, but again, still, there's still so much out of your control, especially with that hanged man card. This is not a time to try to exert force out into the world, except for what you're doing. Okay. That's the one piece of advice. Cause I think if you try to get someone to do something or anything like that, it's just, it's, um, it's going to be so draining and so exhausting for you. Okay. And it's not going to help the situations at all. Okay, so what else for Libra? Knight of Cups. Okay. So as we make our way into Cancer season, I'm getting a sense, actually, interestingly enough, I, I feel like perhaps maybe you really do start to feel that sense of things winding down. It's like Gemini season, big whoosh in the beginning, big whew, everything. And then as we make our way into cancer, you can finally breathe. And there's like a, a wave of calm that really comes. And maybe it's coming from the validation that you get from the Ace of Cups right? The validation that you've made good choices, you're doing good things for yourself and, and whatnot. Um, but I'm also kind of getting a sense that once this ace of cups comes in and it starts to kind of like the potential starts to grow, it won't be long before that potential actually becomes something a little bit more substantive. Cause I'm kind of seeing a jump. 
I don't normally read the cards in this way, like where this is a linear path to this, but technically this was the next card that came out. So I'm seeing it go from here to here. That's kind of a big jump. So the potential of whatever this is actually does seem to be growing fast. And I think it also is because you're not trying to control it. I think you receive the Ace of Cups. I think you accept it. And there's a lot of love and gratitude for whatever it is. But you're also not trying to mold it or force it to grow. It's like you, you planted a seed a long time ago. Now it's finally starting to sprout. Um, all you're doing is watering it. You're not trying to yank it up, trying to get it to grow faster because you know that it would kill it. So the more love you offer that Ace of Cups, the more watering you give it, the more attention you give it, it's going to kind of, I hate to say this, but it's gonna like quantum leap. Okay. It's going to quantum leap into something bigger. And in cancer season, you're going to realize I'm kind of seeing this coming together. I love this last row so much because it feels pure and it feels, um, aligned like Libra is in this place of just like things are just working out and I see a union. Now this may be with someone else. It may be a romantic union. It may be a job offer. It might be something creative or collaborative. It might be a friend, something going really well with them, you know, whatever, but I am seeing, you know, two people. And I feel like this is you cause you, this is a cancer card. You've got cancer on the mid heaven here. Um, I'm kind of seeing you coming together with this Knight of cups. And something that was just a potential a short time ago, now all of a sudden is something more real in your life. If this is a romantic thing, which it might be for some of you, I see romance come through the ninth house. Okay, I'm not going to lie. It's an auspicious house. We've got a lot of ninth house activity, a lot of 10th house. You're kind of in a more visible place right now. The likelihood of you shining bright and the likelihood of you attracting and having this high level of gravity, like it's just higher at this moment. Okay. So, you know, it makes sense that you would be drawing things in. If it's a love interest, it's a love interest. If it's a job offer, it's a job offer. You know, um, now not all of you have put yourself out there in that way. So I'm not suggesting that the love of your life is just going to randomly show up on your doorstep or something like that. But I mean, it could, I mean, I'm kind of getting a sense of a miraculousness with that ace of cups, you know, like I'm not going to rule anything out for Libras, but I'm also kind of just getting a sense that all this activity and all this risk-taking and all this energy that you've been putting into your projects and everything, like you're going to start to see this pay out and you're going to be like, wow, that, that really worked. And, and you'll be relieved and surprised and happy. And with the six of cups, there does seem to be something so sweet and beautiful and pure and innocent about all of it. And it does feel a little bit like a gift. Like there's a lot of like how gift, what a gift it all was, what a, what an amazing, incredible, like Libra can't even believe it. I, I can't believe this is happening. This feels surreal almost, you know, like there might be something surreal that kind of happens. It does feel like a whirlwind and Gemini season can be very whirlwindy. <laughs> we can certainly be like that. It's mercurial. Okay. <laughs> even cancer season can be very, very much like that too. And even though we have the Saturn and Neptune retrogrades happening, I kind of thought we'd get a slowdown. We'll see what other cards come out with the clarifiers, but honestly, this could potentially be, you know, something that is, um, more positive. You know, it's, maybe the retrogrades kind of open up more doors. Maybe it's less external, uh, blockage or less external issues. And maybe a lot of the external stuff starts to clear up and you start to feel things like I'm definitely feeling a flow, like a lot of flow, a lot of receive and give a lot. Like I don't see resistance in this reading all that much. Um, I think it's really because of that night of swords, like I don't think Libra is in a resistant type of place. You know, you're not pushing against yourself. You're not pushing against life. You're not pushing against the opportunities. You are going after them and chasing them down and making sure they happen, you know? And I don't know, it, it just feels right. Like something just feels right for Libra. It just feels like you're where you're supposed to be. I don't know. 
which is amazing. So let's pull out the clarifiers and see what else comes out. Um, so we are going to talk for another 25 to 30 minutes about all these cards. So if you want to join, you are more than welcome. The link will be in the description box in the comment thread down below for the comprehensives. So let's see what comes out. Beautiful, the Hierophant. Okay, we're already making a mess of the cards here. The star. And six of wands, page of swords. Four of coins, three of wands. I love the three of wands for you. The chariot, amazing. Another three of cups and a seven of coins, 10 of wands. There is work involved. We're not going to lie about that. Okay. There's work, there's energy, there's time and ener time and attention. Knight of wands. Okay. But see, you, you've got the warrior energy. You are coming out hot and heavy with the warrior energy. There's like Libra is on it. Ace of coins, beautiful to match the ace of cups. Libra, you are just on it. And then we get the judgment card. Oh, I love that with the realization card. And I love that it's like a keyhole in this. So it's like the key, you know, <laughs> like something unlocks within you. It just opens just like, oh, here's a whole new world. Okay, here we go. Five of cups, four of wands, two of coins. High Priestess, Two of Cups. I mean, if you're looking for romance, this seems like a good month to put yourself out there. Eight of Cups, Page of Coins, another World card. And for the Six of Cups, Queen of Coins, Eight of Coins, and Four of Cups. Okay. So this is where we're going to pick up in the comprehensive. So if you want to join, you are more than welcome. Again, the link is in the description box and the comment thread pinned down below and hope to see you there. All right. Have a good month. Take care.